Hello there, this is DBT and these are the rooms. And alright, today we're gonna be having a look at the patch notes for the upcoming seasons in Asphalt 9. And the content creators have already posted this information a couple days ago because they have, well, early access to this information. But just today, Gameloft posted this information on the website. So you will be able to read through if you want to as well. So I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the whole thing, you know, looking at the cars, the stats, and whatever. But before I do that, why don't you hit the like button on this video if you enjoy my content, as well as subscribing on the channel, because, you know, why not? I post daily, so you have something always to watch over here. But all right, let's read through the entire thing. It says, West to East Europe Bloom Season Patch Notes. Welcome to a new update. In this update, you will experience two seasons, the West to East season, where you will race from Europe to Asia, and the Europe Bloom season, where you will experience the... Uh, Apogee, Apo, I don't know how to pronounce this word, of spring driving European supercars. Then we got the promotional picture and take a peek at the blah, blah, blah. Okay, so new cars. Don't miss these amazing new additions to your roster. And we begin with the Zembo Aurora Tour. Uh, first, they give you the, the screenshot with the status at stock. Um, but no, we're interested on the ones at gold. So we have a maximum rank of 5,100. Obviously, this is a class S car. And by rank alone, it should put it probably in the top cars, probably top five cars in the game. I don't think there's too many that go over 5,000, but yeah. So definitely a, a very strong car, at least in the sense of the rank. Having a look at the stats, it is a relatively fast car. It definitely is some faster than something like a Chiron, for example, even a Chiron 300 plus, just saying. Acceleration, it's in the okay side. Uh, for the most part, class S cars don't tend to have insane acceleration so this is pretty usable i would say handling and nitro as usual for class s cars seems to be kind of bad but then again who knows because handling might look low but it might just drift like an absolute insanity machine so hey who knows but at the very least it definitely is faster than something like um i think the jamera it's the one that was also over 5000 and it was considerably slower but anyway so there it is with well actually it doesn't have a special livery huh I'm gonna say that I'm a little bit disappointed about this car, or, or rather, by the fact that they brought this particular Zembo Aurora. And why is that? Because there's one that looks even cooler. There you have it, look at that thing. This is the Zembo Aurora Agile? Agile? I don't know how to pronounce this word. But yeah, so there's two versions of the Zembo Aurora. This is the more track-oriented one, and then we have the other one, which is a more standard road version. But maybe in the eyes of Game of this is not worth adding. We'll talk about more uh, about my, my thing with the racing cars in this game, because that comes up later. But yeah, so I wish this was the one, but hey, then again, I'm not gonna get the other Zembo anyway, so who cares? But all right, let's keep reading the patch notes. Next up, we have the Aston Martin Vantage VT... G <laughs> Jesus Christ. Aston Martin Vantage V12 2022. Um, and uh, it's a car from of Class D. Uh, five star, apparently, though. This is not always true, so don't pay too much attention to the stars right now. Um, but the stats at gold. Honestly, this car, the rank, it's almost 3,000. But it makes me think a lot of the TVR... What, what is it? TVR? It's not the Sagar. It's the TVR Griffith. Yeah, it's a Class D car that is ridiculously fast, um, but it has some other problems. Now, this one accelerates better than the TVR, though it has lower handling, but I think it's slightly higher nitro. So yeah, it should be kind of around that same-ish performance, I think. That's my guess. Honestly, I don't know, but there you have it, and it has a special livery for it, so there you go. Now, after that, we got the Porsche 911 Carrera RS 3.8. Jesus, what a name. And, well... This one, oh, this is what I was saying about the star. Look, it says five stars, but it's a uh, purple. This is normally four stars. So yeah, this doesn't make much sense, but I think, ah, uh, whatever, this doesn't matter. So anyway, looking at the stats at gold, it's another class D car, rank of 2339. And it's a decently fast acceleration for class D. You know that it's always a little bit iffy. I'm um, handling a nitro. I don't know what to tell you about this car. Honestly, I'm not particularly interested on it. But hey, for the Porsche fanboys, this is going to be great because I do believe that this is somewhat of an important, historically important car for the brand. But anyway, uh, it looks cool with the livery, I'll say that much, so that's kind of dope. Then we got the FV Frangivento Asfane. I don't, I'm pronouncing it Asfane because it has the the um, thingy over there, over there in the E, but whatever. So, Class A car, six stars apparently, kind of makes sense. And if we look at the stats at gold, um, rank of 4377, again, amongst the top cars. And looking at the stats, it does kind of back it up. Because we have a very 
Um, high without being, you know, ridiculously fast class A car. You know that class A, the average is like 360, um, around 370 when you're talking about the top cars that are not just top speed oriented. So this is right over there. For the acceleration, it seems good enough. Um, again, similar to class S, there's not a lot of cars in class A that has in that have insane acceleration of 85, other than a few like Van and things like that. But those, you know, those are different um, type of cars. Uh, but yeah, so good acceleration, handling seems good enough, and Nitro seems pretty good overall. So yeah, I imagine this is going to be another one of those agility-based high-tier class A cars. And here it is with... it doesn't have a special livery, does it? Well, it looks in a different color, but I don't know if this is a livery. It kind of looks the same to me. I think it's the same, it's just a different color. But anyway, then... oh, here we go, let's go, back. We got the Lamborghini SC63. Now, some days ago, I had already made a prediction. Once we heard that this car was coming, before we had information as to what was going to be the, the class and rank, I thought this was going to be class A because the, the other two LMH or LMDH cars that are in the game already are class A. I'm talking about the um, Glickenhaus 007S and the Peugeot 9X8. Both of those cars are LMDH cars and they're really high performing in uh, class A. Well, you know relatively high performing in class a so i was afraid that was going to be the case because six stars and you know class a is going to be very difficult to acquire but no instead it's class b and i think it's kind of funny because at the maximum rank of 4062 if we look at the stats i'm like oh it's another one of these acceleration based lambos in class b we have so many now all right so stats top speed it is definitely fast ish um for a class b not you know it's, it's insanely fast this is about as fast as what maybe the aston martin uh, super Legera. um but then we look at the acceleration of 85 that's really really good we got a handling of 70 which is pretty good and nitro 56 it's just okay so i think this is kind of funny because we have so many lambos like this and i'm specifically talking about lambos in class b that are acceleration based let me think we have uh the lamborghini sto recently added in the past seasons it might not be a good car but it does have an acceleration of 85 we have the uh the hurricane which is the hurricane evo has always been like that we have the sesto elemento we have the um sv12 we have the invincible we have the um the revuelto and i think there's another one that i'm forgetting about so there's too many lambos on on that same role over here in class b specifically but hey it's a lambo i'm not gonna complain i want to get it so yes and here's a nice picture of the car it doesn't have a special livery but there you go anyway moving on we have the de tomaso or the tomato p900 not to be confused with the, the tomato p90 i think that's what it was called uh the p90 is the one in class a this one is in class c and this is what i was talking about racing cars and asphalt 9 that who seemingly don't understand the point of racing cars but anyway um so yeah this is the, the tomato p900 it's a class c car of a maximum rank of 3678 now again looking at the stats we have something that you would kind of expect around this ranking class c you know a tough p335 which makes it fastish but not insanely fast um we got acceleration of 81 handling 60 and nitro of 59 now i'm gonna make a bit of a pause here and talk about this car because look at this thing it looks absolutely amazing and yes this is a a, a model based on the regular the tomato p90 is that what it's called the one in class a i think it's p90 um but this is the more track oriented and you can tell by the fact that it has this ginormous wing it has the the um i always forget the name of this thing well it has the splitter probably a big diffuser on the back whatever um canards these are called can canards this parts over here um so this is definitely a, a oh and the roof scoop a very much track focused car what it what is a track focused car generally speaking a track focused car is going to be slower than a, than the road version yes i guess that's why they're like oh it makes it a worse car but the reality is that a track car it has all of this stuff because what it does is provide insane grip and amazing turn capabilities so you should make it so that this car sure is not gonna go as fast as the regular class a version but it should be relatively competitive in the sense that it could it goes around corners and all of that so much faster so much better so i don't understand why game Love does this thing where they add the road version and then make it insanely powerful and then they add the racing version and it makes they make it incredibly weak i don't understand this but at the same time i'm not complaining because the way that you're gonna acquire this car is kind of nice i'll read about that later and here's the picture but yeah they've done this thing like for example with the senna and the senna gtr 
Uh, the GTR is the even more track focused version of the Senna, but in this game they made it worse, worse handling. It's like, what? What? Okay, whatever. That's a rant for another day. So we have the information that some of these cars will have exclusive decal and the disclaimer, um, just in case that there's some additional trickery to get the El uh, the Legend Pass car, like there was the case of the Kunta Shopi I back when. But anyway, so we go into the information, the specific information of each season, west to east. Time limited event. Celebrate Game Love's anniversary and start with the Bugatti Chiron. Gifts await you on the track. So cool. I mean, not very clear, just something about the Chiron, a card that a lot of people have, a lot of people don't have, so if they have a chance to unlock it here, that's gonna be great. But I do hope that by gifts away you on the await you on the track is gonna be something, you know, something more. I'm um, continuing the celebrations with the Ford Mustang 60th anniversary TLE. Alright, not much information, but you can imagine that any Mustang that is in the game is gonna be um featured over here, including that Mustang that everybody loves, the what's it called? The Mac E 1400. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Alright. Treasure our planet on Earth Day with the electrifying GT by Citroen. Here's a funny thing. The GT by Citroen in this car is not electric. Um, I've talked about this before. But the, the idea is that the, the main car, the GT by Citroen, if it were ever goes into production, it would be electric. But the one that got built IRL, it actually has a, um, a, a combustion engine. And apparently that's what they used for Asphalt 9 as well, because it vroom, so it's not electric. So this... This is kind of funny, but okay. Uh, then we got the Nissan GTR 50 Edel Design, 370 Zinion Edition, 390 GT1, um, featured in the Golden Week TLE. I mean, I imagine that there's going to be packs to start up these cars if you if, if what that's what you're looking for, but yeah. Um, the Overclock Showcase will be back once again, understandable, so that you can get some Overclock chips thingies. Um, Rebel in the, in the Season's Cars, in the, uh, in the Season Showcase, uh, featuring a ton of season-related rides. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the normal stuff. Um, test your skill in the Legend Pass Car Showcase TLE featuring the Porsche 911 Carrera. Well, here's right away when they said that this is indeed the Legend Pass Car. So, yes, if you are really into Porsche, this is your opportunity to get this car, I guess. I don't know, Class D car. I think this is kind of funny, and I'm going to make a pause here over, over again. Because um, around the end of whatever season where the Invincible was added in the game, um, you know that it was the Legend Pass car. I imagine that Gameloft saw a massive surge of purchases of the Legend Pass. And why do I say that? Because Gameloft um, instantly, I don't know if everybody got it, but I would imagine most people got it, or at least the people who bought the Legend Pass like myself. Uh, we got this, what you call it, um, a survey uh, where they were asking, the survey was specifically about the Legend Pass. And it's like, what brought you to, what brought you to want to buy the Legend Pass and basically like they, they were scratching their heads like wow what did we do right that so many people bought it and i made a specific point and obviously uh, it's not like my my uh, opinion alone matters right but i did mention a lot like the main reason people would go for this is because it's a good car that you're giving there well giving slash selling um so because yeah you know that there's been a lot of you remember that legend pass where you could get the almighty ktm crossbow that super low class d car yay so yeah, that's why I was saying like, hey, if you provide good cars in the Legend Pass, more people are gonna buy it. It's a win-win. And what did they do after that? They released the Lamborghini STO, which is a bad Class B car. And I'm like, okay, okay, they didn't have time to prepare. But now they had time to prepare and they bring a Class D car as a Legend Pass car. Uh, I will be buying the Legend Pass, but not for that. I will buy it, I'll say why, a little later. Uh, season car key hunts in order. We got the Ferrari 599 XX Evo Class C car. Very useful. Go for it. It's a grind, but worth it for this Class C car, definitely. We got the 4GT Mark II. Um, very similar, actually, to the Lambo STO. Uh, not a great car. In fact, very slow for Class B, but it's still a very fun car to drive. But it takes so many blueprints to get that the only way I would suggest you to go for it is if you already have some progress on that thing. You have it at a couple stars, even if you don't have the key. Because, man, the last star takes like a million blueprints to get. So, there you go. And this is the more interesting part to me. The McLaren 600 LT Spider in a car hunt. Oh, man, I'm going to be going for that for sure. I'm not a huge McLaren fan, but being able to get a Class B, a mid-high Class B car, I'll get it. And then we also have a community voted car hunt for the Aston Martin 177. Again, another high uh, class, mid-high Class B car. So definitely go for, I would say, if you're aiming for for car hunts, forget about this one, this car, if you don't have it, try 
Um, but yeah, definitely the 600 LT and the 177 are the ones to, to keep an eye on. Then we got uh, some picture of the Korean Food Festival special events. Here we go. The FV, FV Frangivento as Fane. Special event will run for 14 days featuring epic rides such as the McLaren 675LT, Mercedes AMG GT Black Series, Porsche 911 GT2 RS Club Sport, and Lamborghini SC63. As always, the key cars are free to ride. So, um, 675LT, I think there's been a couple of opportunities to get this car. Uh, for the AMG GT Black Series, I think that was only available in a... In a... What was it? It was a Grand Prix, but I think there was some other event, but it's not like there's been a key hunt or anything, so not a ton of people are going to have this one. Porsche 911 GT2 RS Club Sport. This is one of the rarest cars I've seen in the game. Like, very rarely I see it. I, I think a very small percentage of people have it. Uh, it, it. I think it came out in a Grand Prix a long, 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 long time ago and never ran again, so there is that. Uh, then we got the SC63, the new Lambo. So, yes, that's going to be a bunch of free tries. Did someone say kimchi? The Korean Food Festival special event is jam-packed with treats for you to enjoy. will feature a plethora of classics, even some long-awaited cars like the Renault RS01. Yes, but we'll be able to, we, we'll, will we be able to get the key? That's the real question, but meh, we'll see. The special hunt will return in its original format. Yay! This time featuring the Pagani Zonda R. No supports card needed. So... The, if you don't know, the special on the original format was, uh, I hope that they're talking about the one of the Ultima RS, in which we were able, so long as you grinded for long enough, you were able to just straight up unlock the car, even golden. It was fantastic. Then there was the, in the last season, I think, it, it was when there was one for the ATS GT, and that would need a support cars, and it was, I don't know. So hopefully Pagani is on the R, a lot of people will be able to get it, myself included. I love this car. I really, really like it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to unlocking it. The Lamborghini SC63 will hit the tracks in its dedicated Grand Prix event. Defeat your opponents and get your hands on this stylish ride. So this is why I said that I was going to buy the Legend Pass. And not because you need the Legend Pass for the Grand Prix, but by having the Legend Pass, I have more fuel, which may gives me more chances to uh, do practice runs and try to improve because otherwise, you know, refuel the car and refuel again and all of that stuff. For that reason alone, I'm going to be getting the Legend Pass, because I really, really, really want to get this car, so I'm going to be trying definitely quite a bit. But all right, then we got the Hurricane Evil Spider Star Starway Returns. Kind of funny, because overall, you would say that this is a better car than this, but this is the one that you get super easy. Anyway, whatever. Then we got information for the Euro Bloom Season Time Limited Events. We got the Draco GTE TLE serves as a kind reminder to work hard, play hard. I never understood why this car, though. It's, it's, it seems like, ah, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Accelerate at breakneck, breakneck speeds towards the Cinco de Mayo and the dedicated TLE featuring the rematch Nevera. Now, Cinco de Mayo, it's a Mexican celebration, which, by the way, it's kind of funny because for some reason, uh, people outside the outside Mexico think that Cinco de Mayo, uh, the 5th of May, uh, it's an incredibly important date in Mexico. And it is. It is a holiday. But it's not the 4th of July of Mexico. It's not. That would be September 15th. So I don't know why so many people pay so much attention to the 5th of May. But okay, it's fine. Uh, and featuring the Rematch Nevera. Um, okay, sure. I mean, well, I guess there was quote-unquote a Mexican car. The, the Inferno, but license issues or whatever. So I guess they just had to add whatever. But still, Rematch Nevera, okay. Uh, family means no one gets left behind. Porsche has you covered in the International Day of Families TLE featuring the Porsche 911 GT1 Evolution, 17 Cam and GT4 Club Sport, and the Porsche Taycan Turboist. And still, why they never feature again the the um, the 911 GT2 RS? Anyway, you won't believe what the TLE team cooked up. Take the Koenigsegg Regera, Vanda, Dendobrin, Dendobrin, Dendrobium, Jesus Christ, this name always gives me issues, and Apollo IE for a spin on the World B Day. Take the season's cars for some spin on the overclock and season showcase TLEs. New season, same Legend Pass car. Yay. You got another chance to prove your superiority in the Legend Pass showcase TLE. Season car key hunts in order. We're going to get the Porsche Panamera Turbo S, Class C, if I remember correctly. Very good one, so there is that. Um, Acura NSX GT3 Evo, decent Class C car. Did I say Class D or Class C? It's C in the Panamera. Dunker for DA GTO Individual Series, more Class C. And McLaren Senna GTR. This is interesting because this car um, has never had a car hunt or anything. I think this will be the very first time. So, yes, a good chance to max the thing because it's beautiful. Even if it's a worse McLaren Senna, just saying. Um, the final car hunt of the season will feature the newly added The Tomato P900. Oh, this excites me. This is what I was saying that 
con, by game of making this car, this car worse than the regular de Tomato, it kind of annoys me because of, you know, the, the whole thing of race car versus road car, whatever. But it makes me happy because they made it so bad, I guess. Or, I, I mean, at least not good. So, at least not so good that they were going to make a special event. Or no, 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 no. It's a car hunt. You're going to get it. So, I'm definitely looking forward to unlock this car because it's an absolute beauty. And having a quick look at the special events, the long-awaited Zen Aurora Tour will make its way into the game in not one, but two dedicated special events. So now, not, not only do we have repeating car hunts, no, excuse me, repeating um, uh, Legend Pass cars in two seasons, we also get a repeated special event. But okay, whatever. The first stage um, of the first special event features the car at max free try, so make sure to take it for a spin. The Agile Tech Rules 1896 track version is back and is dedicated Unleashed event featuring the Genty, Aquilone, Porsche 935, uh, La Ferrari Perna, and Pagani Juara BC. So it's an Unleashed, so you know, you're gonna still have to spend some tokens if you wanna max it out or get the key, probably. It's gonna be one of those where, hey, you want the key, you need to have it at six stars. But hey, if you have the car at high stars, then this is a good opportunity for you to get the key. Uh, the Starway rotation will continue with the Peugeot Onyx Starway event, as expected. Raise your competition to the finish line to get your hands on the Aston Martin Vantage uh, V12 2022 and its dedicated Grand Prix. So it's going to be a Grand Prix for a Class D car. Holy moly. You, want, you won't want to miss it, as it's one of the support cars in the Zenvo Aurora Tour special event. Um, okay, sure. I mean, I know I'm not going to get the Zenvo. I, I never go for these super high cars because I don't have the garage for it, so it's fine. Then we got in other overclocks adjustment switch to a 24 hour format rather than the fixed timers as well as more duration option for your overclock chip. So this is a good change because it used to be the case where um, do you know how the the, uh, the the day in the game resets at certain time always at certain time for me for example it's at 6 p.m. Um, but yeah it, it really depends so that's when the TLEs reset like the daily TLEs the the what's it called the credit highs and all of that. So it was kind of like that in the in the upper clock, but now what they're going to be doing, I believe, is that it's going to be duration. Is it going to be 24 hours? I think so. So basically, you activate your thing, and instead of, of oh, it's going to time out at this particular fixed time, it's going to be, um, okay, from this moment, you have 24 hours to use this thing. So I think that's a cool, cool little change. And from there on, it's just the closing of the notes. We hope you enjoy these exciting events and cars in the upcoming Asphalt 9 Legends update for the latest news, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then here's a cookie redeem. I tried it. At least on Android, this is gone. I don't know. Maybe in different platforms, this might still be available, meaning on, on iOS, maybe on Xbox or whatever. But yeah, on Android, they're gone instantly. Like, I checked this a few hours after this, this uh, article was out and the codes were already spent, so... Yay! So there you have it. These are the entirety of the patch notes. I wanted to read through the entire thing to give you my thoughts on, on the whole thing. Again, just going over it really quickly. I am excited for... Not this, not this, not this. No, 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 no. Don't care. No, no. Yes! I want to get my Lamborghini SC63. I want to get my the Tomato P900. At least from the new cars. And then from the car hunts again. Uh, there's some that I'm definitely interested. I'm interested on the special hunt for the Pagani Zonda R. When it comes to the car hunts, where were they? Uh, they were over here. I'm looking forward for the 600 LT Spider, the Aston Martin 177. And over here, which one did we see? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Okay. Yeah, McLaren Senna GTR. So, yeah, why don't you let me know in the comments what of this whole thing excites you the most as to being a realistic thing that you're going to go for. Because I imagine a lot of people are going to be like, oh my god, the Zenvo, but who's going to get the Zenvo? Only some people, very, very limited amount of people. So, in a more realistic scenario, what you, the player, the viewer, the commenter, what are you excited about that you think you're going to be able to get? But alright, if you enjoyed the content, you know what to do, hit the like button, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you next one. Bye-bye.